Yeah. Yeah. We could do a show where... This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to another edition of Business in Hawaii. I'm Dalen Yanagida and we're broadcasting live from the Think Tech studios in downtown Honolulu. If you would like to tune in live, we are at www.thinktechhawaii.com. You can also sign up to get on our mailing list there as well. The theme of Business in Hawaii is to bring you stories of local businesses by local people. Our guests share with us their journey to building successful businesses in our sometimes challenging environment. In the Think Tech studios with us today are Tracy Newman, MBA candidate at the Scheidler College, Business, a school, College of Business and intern at Hawaii Tech Support and Satellite Gateway Operator <laughs> at General Dynamics. Dynamics. Yeah. <laughs> Just three titles. Um, and Lee won't disappoint either because he's got his share. Lee Wang, who is also an executive MBA candidate um, with the Scheidler College of Business, agent with Locations Hawaii, and owner of Lucy's Lab Creamery in Ward Village. My goodness, you guys. <laughs> we try. <laughs> Throw me off my game, thank you. Most people have one title. <laughs> um, so thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we have a lot to talk about. Um, first of which um, is that you both had full careers. Full careers as a business owner and as the, the space person <laughs> in the Air Force. And that's something that we didn't share in um, the intro is that you've also had a full career in the Air Force, um, which, which you've closed out and we'll, we'll talk about what's next for you. But I think it's amazing that having full careers and yet still on the journey to reinvent yourselves in, into um, different, whether it's different industries or different directions. So. I would love to hear first, Tracy, if you want to tell, go ahead and give me the fancy title again. All right, yes. <laughs> Thank you for having us on the show, Dalen. Oh, my pleasure. Um, so we'll start out, I guess, at the, the first thing. Um, I can kind of summarize my career in the Air Force. I was um, in the Air Force for about nine years, uh, stationed out in Colorado, and uh, my job was a space operator so I started out commanding GPS satellites and I went through a few other things before before transitioning out of the Air Force and I was looking around in California where I was raised and um, a couple jobs in Hawaii um, I was lucky to find the job at General Dynamics where I'm at now and so I'm there full-time um, while attending Scheidler <laughs> College of Business and I wanted to finish my MBA so I'm on track for that um, which is great and kind of making a pivot into the world of marketing. Um, I loved everything about aerospace. The industry is growing and it's so exciting to me still, but um, I'm also kind of growing and changing. So I, I'd like to get out in front of more people out from behind the computer screen all day and just the whole community of Honolulu has been so exciting so far and just the business world. Um, so I'm really happy where I'm at now. Um, I just started an internship with a local tech company, Hawaii Tech Support, and I've been absolutely loving that. So that's what I'm looking forward to in over this next semester, and we'll see so in the future. So what do you do at your internship? So I'm the sales and marketing intern right now with John Strandberg, and we are going into a lot of networking, um, a lot of networking functions, a lot of... Uh, developing the sales and marketing plan. So I'm using literally all the skills that I just picked up from class, like the night before, we'll say, and kind of put together a business plan for this uh, for this growing tech company in Honolulu. So it's been fun. John is no stranger to <laughs> several shows on Think Tech Hawaii. And so yeah. we do know that he um, is a GM at Hawaii Tech Support. Um, and of course, everybody knows John 
And so obviously, um, you're going to have a, a great time um, learning under his, his leadership. So congratulations on, on landing that internship. And um, from what he already tells me is you're amazing. Oh my so. God. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's so been I know it's great. <laughs> I know it's going to go very well for you and for Hawaii Tech support. Um, Lee, uh, well, I mean, so you're an MBA candidate in the executive um, MBA program yes. at Scheidler, but um, you already own a business. So I do. tell me about that. Um, so I own Lucy's Lab Creamery, which is a boutique. Uh, artisan ice cream shop in uh, Kaka'ako. We're located in South Shore Market. Uh, we just celebrated our four-year anniversary and um, we started off on uh, nearby in not so great neighborhood uh, that has flourished into a really thriving, vibrant, uh, up-and-coming neighborhood and um, we're going strong and having fun doing it. Yeah. So I know Lucy, <clears throat> Lucy's Lab Creamery. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, but you're a successful business owner. I mean, honestly, yes, the, the, you started that business yeah. in a not so desirable area, but you must have pegged it to be that up and coming area because you were in it in its, its current yeah. heyday, a, right? I mean, yeah. it's, it's booming. I mean, part of it is I, my full-time job is actually a real estate broker for locations, and so I'm in real estate. Um, it takes a little bit of vision from when they're pitching the idea, you know, five, six years back, to see it come to fruition to what it is today. And um, I actually do uh, project sales for Howard Hughes as well. So seeing their master plan come oh. all together um, kind of helped me have faith in, in their vision and, you know, we're seeing it come to life now. They just finished the park and uh, have a lot of other things coming in into play. So. so having all that experience, you would think that he could potentially teach one of these classes <laughs> at the, uh, the Executive MBA program. Um, so what led you back to, to school? When I first started Lucy's, I told myself, um, okay, I've got to put a little bit of money to get this started up, but uh, this will be an MBA by experience and uh, getting my feet wet and making the mistakes and having fun doing it. And uh, it definitely was learning by experience, but at the same time, um, I, I just wanted to get the, the there, I think there's a whole gamut of things that I didn't understand and I wanted to get formal training and understand the theories behind why I'm doing the things I'm doing instead of just kind of running around with a uh, chicken with its head cut off. So. Um, I, I kind of put it together, saw if it was right for in my time in, in, in my life, and uh, the stars aligned, and so I said, let's go for it. Yeah. So what's the difference between the traditional MBA program and the executive MBA program? I think, um, I think the traditional MBA program is, it seems almost self-explanatory, I think, but it's a, I think it's a different focus at the end game for um, a lot of the executive MBA students I've noticed have kind of more their eye on the C-suite positions mm -hmm. at the top, if I'm right. I, yeah, they, they feed us. That's, <laughs> that's, a, that's oh. one of the differences. <laughs> no, I think so. I think they the, feed you guys. They, they do. Yeah. See, they go to class <laughs> they and they have full meals. <laughs> oh my what are gosh. you getting? <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I've got a, there's that vending machine. I, the vending machine? Exactly. Peanut butter exactly. and jelly exactly. <laughs> in the traditional program. In your bag. Crustables is my favorite, yes. <laughs> Smash between oh, Crustables, yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think that's part of it. Part of it is just because uh, the I think the average um, experience for an ex executive MBA in our cohort was like twelve years. Nice. I think for the global was like three or four years, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so just because of the experience is why I think most of them are mm -hmm. gearing towards the higher end executive positions. But um, I think this is all of us in due time. Mm -hmm. um, that's I think this main. Main difference part partly would be time too. I think global uh, commits a lot more time to um, class classes than we do. Ours is are a little bit more abbreviated and mm -hmm. uh, faster pace. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. So what makes you decide to go from? Well, I mean, you both still work full time plus plus um, with 
your full-time um, space job <laughs> 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 and the internship and then with Lucy's and um, working for locations. I, what motivates you to go back to school? I mean, first of all, where do you find the time? Um, and then second, what's the motivation? Tricky. Well, um, the time, I just create it. There, <laughs> there really isn't any, so um, I wanted to go back to school and I, I'm so glad that I did because just the energy, I think there's a spirit of innovation and kind of like a forward-looking vibe that I get whenever I'm in class with my classmates and I just love being around that, just having all these ideas flying around and people wanting to go somewhere new, a new direction or start something new and that just is like an addicting feeling to me, mm -hmm. so exciting. Yeah, that's definitely like, I, I think the, the information is the information, but the people and the energy you get from it and the connections are invaluable, especially in a place like Hawaii where mm -hmm. connection is everything. Mm -hmm. So my guess is that um, with the executive MBA program and what you're experiencing, cohort mentality, is that is, Yes, right? yeah, yes. everybody's very tight. Everybody yeah. knows <laughs> That's each other's nice. strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, it's now, good to... Now, we have to remember, there are a number of professional organizations, right? Active in town, Vistage, EO, um, YP, uh, YP yeah. um, which are all present in our community because leaders, business leaders, um, CEOs, executives, they are looking for a way to network with one, an one another, but not just to socialize. Sure. It's an exchange of thoughtful ideas and upcoming trends and innovation. And is that what you both are experiencing in your programs? Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Do you spend a lot of time in that think, um, the, the, the think tank, if you will? Yeah, I, th I could say for the traditional MBA program, I've noticed there's a lot of um, there's a lot of small projects and presentations that we go through throughout a single class, and each topic is kind of on slide. They give us this small window of time to research something that's brand new in like data management or something, you know, some part of business. And so we'll kind of go through and we'll just put together maybe a five minute presentation. But just having to do that ourselves kind of puts that in your mind, and so you have this idea of like what's, you know, what's being, what's coming up and yeah. what's happening in the world, what's new, you know. Nice. Yeah. I think yeah. it, for, for me, having worked in real estate for a number of years and having done this business, um, there's definitely a distinction between working and executing and actually doing it and then going back and learning the theories and concepts and so taking it from the idea to, uh, I think I, I went backwards. I went out and did it and then learned about what I did and the new stuff that I had no idea about. And so, especially in this business environment, things are always changing. There's, if you're not innovating, if you're not mm -hmm. creating a better version of yourself at wherever you are, you're going to be falling behind. So um, I think maybe I felt a little bit of that in both the real estate side and, and the business side that um, I was using kind of old techniques that need to be refreshed. So. You know, getting the getting the experience from the concept side was really important. So for us old folks, <laughs> we need to learn from you young folks and um, <laughs> what's up and coming. So we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, I'd love to hear about your thoughts um, as as the the young people that's going to lead um, our business communities in a new direction how technology is affecting the way that people do business now because we know it's changed immensely. So um, let's talk about that when we come back. We are going to take that short break. We'll see you back here shortly. Thank you. This is Think Tech Hawaii. You guys are amazing. Raising okay, public so, awareness. Um, so tech, Choose to of course, treat right? With the help Especially of a in Hawaii, we, most physical of our businesses therapist, <coughs> through movement and exercise. are ingrained in tradition, no warning right? Levels required. Mm -hmm. And you get to actively participate in your care. Protect Choose to all improve of the your health culture without the risks and a lot of family-owned small Choose businesses. Physical therapy. You don't change anything. But where technology is pressuring businesses to, to make some changes. Even brand new businesses Aloha. like like yours. It's yeah. four years I'm old. I'm Marcia Joyner. You inviting might be all, all, already realizing. Come visit with us. 
on Cannabis Chronicles, a 10,000-year odyssey, um, then let's where we talk explore about, um, and examine the internship, the plant what you want to get out of it, the muse where you has land. given us. Mm -hmm. So. Let's and stay with us get out there, as we explore tell everybody all the facets what you want to do of this planet. So that they'll find it. <laughs> they'll find you. Good job right. this <laughs> yeah. All right. Welcome back to Business in Hawaii. Joining us today are Tracy Newman and Lee Wang, both of whom are MBA candidates at Scheidler College of Business. And they have many, many titles, but I'm going to not mess that up. <laughs> um, but when Tracy isn't at school and her space job, <laughs> she is an intern at Hawaii Tech Support. And um, while Lee is not in school, he's an agent with locations and he's a business owner. But you guys are innovators. And I think you guys are going to be taking uh, our, our community, our business community, in a new direction. And when we left, I had asked you folks to, to share with an older person like myself. Um, so what do, we, what do we need to know? Or what are we looking out for in terms of technology and how it's demanding that we change the way we do business? Um, I mean, I think there's, there's, a, there's a lot of, there's a need in Hawaii to keep talent here. You know, keeping talent here um, is going to create opportunities for the generation after us. And really, the mentality that the older generation has passed to us about paying it forward hasn't changed. It's really just the way we go about it. And so, um, I mean, there's a number of issues that are really passionate to me, especially being in real estate, you know, affordable housing, uh, cost of living. It's tough in Hawaii, but I think all these are rooted in, in the opportunities that we have in Hawaii. So the more we can keep talented individuals in Hawaii, the more opportunities there is going to be for it to go around and help uh, Hawaii in general. So um, I think tech is the uh, tool and the vehicle to that, to that end. And it's kind of up to us to, to make sure that we can execute that. Um, we were just saying that your business is four years young. But you had already mentioned that there are things that you are realizing through your executive MBA program that um, there, are, there are things you, you didn't know and that you need to work on. What are some of those things? Um, <laughs> I, I learned uh, tough lessons like um, the toughest one is employees. I think that's the lifeblood of any business. Um, your people will uh, advocate advocate for you or be your biggest headache sometimes and so um, learning learning the ins and outs of you know like you said you're you're in a startup that does uh, HR and payroll and things like even the basics like that uh, as well as just um, company culture motivation you know the stuff we learn in the MBA program is geared towards large-scale corporations businesses um, if we were to take executive positions but you know, this is, I, I, I took my business as a great incubator to test these things out and learn firsthand um, if I employ this strategy, what's going to happen and what kind of response am I going to get from my employees? So. Wow, nice test case. That's <laughs> a great test case. And, and, and you are a true, a true tech person. <laughs> um, from the Air Force to now what you're doing at General Dynamics. How do you see tech changing the way we need to do business? Um, I do. I had I had to agree with a lot of Lee's points from earlier about um, about the tech industry in specific and uh, keeping jobs and good people in Hawaii um, because I think that's that's something that almost every company is needing is that tech side and. Um, one of the easiest things to do if you're if you're graduating and you have technical skills is to start looking maybe Silicon Valley someplace that has like a higher pay rate. But what I think people are not understanding is that there's an increasing number of tech jobs available in Hawaii. There's a lot of opportunities here and there's a lot of companies too if you're a small business on the other side that might be looking to outsource some of that. Um, a lot of people will look straight to the mainland but there are a lot of really good tech companies right here at home too. So I think that kind of, that's, that's one of the biggest things that I'm noticing that's been changing and just growing. 
I, I would agree because um, we've had a number of, of guests um, on the Business and Wine Show that talk about tech, tech startup, and the fact that just because there's not a brick and mortar, people tend to think, well, Hawaii's not really tech. We're tech all over the place, right? Mm -hmm. We're, yeah. We need to transact across bodies of water, <laughs> you know, as opposed to just miles of highway. And so we actually do have those resources, those, those businesses here, but I think people just don't see them, and so they don't realize that the opportunities are here, which is why I think what Scheidler College of Business is doing is amazing because it's reminding their candidates, their master's degree candidates, that the, the jobs are here. And we're building and developing yeah. businesses in Hawaii. And um, particularly for a, an already established business owner like yourself to go to Scheidler yeah. and say, hey, this is where I want to do business. Sure. It's, it's amazing. Um, so tell me about some of <laughs> the exciting things that you folks are going to be doing at Scheidler coming up. I know that you guys get to build businesses, which is amazing. And you have amazing professors who have extraordinary experience already in the business community. And then you have your cohorts. You folks probably build some amazing things. Can you guys talk about some of that? Um, I can I can start out with uh, personally what drives me, I think, is being part of an industry or some some edge of growth to where I'm still able to make to shape some of the decisions and the directions. So that's why that's why I was attracted to space. And then in the same vein, that's why I'm attracted to technology because cyberspace, cybersecurity is as another frontier that's changing every day. And I love being part of the factor that kind of shapes what that means to people and like where does IT come into people's everyday lives. And so so that, that is going to be a shift for you, right? I mean, a from one, the, yeah. whole, the whole tech <laughs> space thing and Just then wanting to go into to sales and marketing. Yeah. Is, is that a, an interest that you developed along the way? or I, I've kind of had a little bit of that bug all along, and so now I just really want to explore the, the marketing and the network side of it. It's so much fun to me. and. Also, I think there's kind of an ed educational aspect to it. When I go out and I try to explain to people the way that, that an IT solution, for example, will fit their needs and how we can customize it and what it used to look like before and what it looks like now and what it will look like into the future. So I just, I've always had that thing where I like to come up with something that I think will work the best and hope it works the best for everybody. And I just, I like having the freedom, I guess, to to creatively come up with something like that. Nice. Um, so what we do know of entrepreneurs, Lee, like yourself, <laughs> is that you guys don't stop. <laughs> I'm very restless. I have ADD for sure. Yeah. Um, that there's always another idea and another idea. So yeah. tell me about what your thoughts are. I mean, you're in the executive MBA program, and you folks do um, use that as an incubator for, you know, some creative things. Yeah. Um, so does that mean that you're off and running onto something else? <laughs> I have a couple <laughs> projects I'm working on. Um, this semester is our last semester, so uh, one of the classes we had last semester was entrepreneurship, and our professor uh, kind of developed a framework for us to, based off, of, for me, although I have a small business, the uh, entrepreneurship of a startup is totally different, and so is a really exciting, interesting, you know, <laughs> rabbit hole to jump into. And so for our practicum this semester, we're going to be doing uh, a, a startup that involves group dating. Um, in another class, we're, for, we're taking real estate investment. Although I'm in real estate and everybody in my class expects me to, like, <laughs> oh, you, you know this stuff already. It's, it's a lot of really interesting um, uh, material. One of the projects we have is we have to put together a plan for um, some sort of real estate development. And so that is definitely an avenue that I have some, some familiarity with, but not to the level that uh, they're expecting us in this class. So it's, it's going to feel good to stretch out and go beyond what, what I'm comfortable with. And well, kind of look forward to. <laughs> very busy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Why not more than I can choose sometimes? But, you know. Absolutely. Just going and going, right? Yeah. You can just see that. Um, so 
For some of our viewers, they are already established career people like yourselves. Um, what's your advice? Do you go back to school? Do you not? Is it worth the time? What are your, what are your thoughts? I, I say it, it takes a high level of optimism and <laughs> <'cause>, <laughs> so yeah, like we were saying, you can have an established route and that's fantastic. But if you want to, if you want to change it, you're risking, you know, losing something that you have and moving into something possibly better. Mm -hmm. So you got to think of it that way. Um, when you chose your internship, was it very, um, was it clear the path that you wanted to take? So you knew exactly what type of internship you wanted. Um, I think I think so. At first, at first I was kind of shopping around, and I, I wasn't totally sure. Um, but I think when I it was when I met the people at Hawaii Tech that I I kind of knew this is this is going to be a good fit for my odd oddly shaped career. <laughs> But you know, I mean, after speaking with John Strandberg at Hawaii Tech Support, I mm -hmm. mean, what they're gaining out of your internship is amazing. And you know, they never imagined that um, they would find such great resources in an intern. And I think that goes to, to the point that you folks have established careers and then you go back to school because that must be a different perspective, right? As opposed to when you did your bachelor's degree maybe without any work experience, sure. then flipping it on its head yeah. and having something to apply to real life. Yeah. And do you use Lucy's as kind of that look back and forth? I do. It's it's a it's a looking glass to see if I'm on the right track and if there's. Uh, I think it, that mirror always tells me there's always room for self self improvement and things that I can be working on. So. Um, it, to me, as much as it is a business, it's also a tool for me to kind of uh, self-evaluate. So. so would you recommend your path to, to other business owners? <laughs> My path was really uh, <laughs> a little bit rough, but you know, you think you get hardened by, the, by uh, fire, so why not? Well, I mean, you say it's rough, but everybody's looking at you like, wow. <laughs> just, 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 they see the duck on top of the water, right. but they don't see it. Like, it looks fantastic. Hard, yeah. We saw the storefront, Lucy's Lab, beautiful, mm -hmm. and then we saw you move into, you know, the up-and-coming um, commercial industry uh, um, sector, yeah, right? Yeah. South Shore Market. I mean, no one sees your struggle. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> maybe Only you need my girlfriend. That's <laughs> <Right>. it. <laughs> <That's> it. <laughs> maybe maybe Let's one day it. that is something you should talk about because yeah. there are going to be sure. folks that follow that want to open up businesses and for someone the like struggle yourself, is worth it. That, the struggle that, is worth that it. That makes it look yeah. so easy that you know maybe you should expect some some. If you don't expect rough right. waters, you're in for a treat, but it, it's worth it. Yeah, definitely. Is there anything else that you'd like to share about your intern experience or um, your candidacy um, before we wrap this up today? Um, I think um, I can say it seems almost like a cliche if you say uh, something new is kind of a, a mixture between anxiety and excitement. But if you're feeling more excitement, then I think that's kind of tells you that's the right way to go. Fantastic. Mm. Uh, one of the MOs for our, our business uh, at Lucy's was to give back. Like a portion of our nice. proceeds goes back to breast nice. cancer charities. And I think as young professionals, whether we're in a nine to five uh, traditional job or we're starting businesses or we're in a startup, I think the component of giving back to the community mm -hmm. needs to be a part of um, what, what we're doing here in Hawaii. So I agree wholeheartedly. And and Hawaii thanks you and Lucy's for, for giving back and for being that business. Um, I cannot wait to hear about the businesses, the startup businesses that you <laughs> folks are um, cultivating um, at Scheidler College. Um, and of course, um, having you back to talk about your business adventures. I mean, amazing, amazing. Um, unfortunately, we are out of time. I do want to thank Tracy and Lee for taking time out of their super busy <laughs> schedules to share their amazing stories with us. And a very big thank you to the amazing staff, production staff here in Think Tech Studios. If you would like to be a guest on our show, please feel free to email your information to shows at thinktechhawaii.com. Business in Hawaii airs every Thursday at 2 p.m. and we look forward to seeing you here next week. 
Yeah. You guys are awesome. Yay. So exciting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs>